Hello, attendees of the 2022 Global Forum on Nicotine, or GFN. We are excited for you to join us uh, virtually or in person. Uh, my name is Lindsay Stroud, and I'm director of the Consumer Center at the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. I'm also a board member at ABM, and I run the website thr101.org. Hi, and I'm Martin Cullip, International Fellow of the Consumer Center at the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. And one of the cool things about uh, TPA's Consumer Center is that Martin is based in the UK and I'm based in the United States. And when we're talking about vaping and just tobacco harm and reduction in general, this can get rather interesting. Um, what do you say, Martin? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the differences between the US and the UK are pretty stark, to say the least. Definitely. That's Absolutely. So we wanted to kind of tell the GFN um, kind of some of the questions that we have amongst ourselves and the differences between the United States and the UK. And I think, Martin, you can actually kind of start with the UK because e-cigarettes were actually introduced to your guys' market before they were in the US. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they, they started to appear around uh, 2007, maybe maybe even earlier. I think there are people who There's like 2003 music. in Europe. Yeah, yeah, but they were very primitive, but they, they, they've they advanced and, and they've had a massive impact over here. Um, yeah, we, we do have quite relaxed rules on on vaping products in particular, um, but and, it, and it's it's transferred into uh, deep, steep declines in pre uh, smoking prevalence. So um, it, that, the same kind of thing, I think, was happening in the US until the FDA's come along and kind of uh, put a spoke in the wheels, haven't they? Well, I think the big difference, like going back to the start of the e-cigarettes e being introduced to either market is the FDA has been against e-cigarettes since they came to the U.S. market. Um, for those that are unaware, you know, e-cigarettes were introduced to the United States back in 2007. Some studies say, say 2006. There's that for you, Skip. Um, I always go with 2007, um, and that is when the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, did try to block shipments of e-cigarettes because they wanted to regulate them as a medical device. Um, 2009, FDA would get congressional authority to regulate tobacco products. And so the Center of Tobacco Products came in and it was in 2012 that a judge did rule that FDA could regulate them as tobacco products. And then the rest is just history. It is ironic. There is a big irony that once the FDA did get approval to regulate them as tobacco products you did kind of see this explosion of vape shops and you know just all the random devices and everything um that you know between 2012 to 2016 really just especially here in the states so i think that two different public health you know p the agencies that are in you know place to protect public health and i think that the uk you guys have embraced them that you know where the fda here in the states is steadfastly you know blocked at adult access to these products well, it was really a, a kind of a bit of an accident that it happened that way in the UK. There, there was a big push to uh, make vaping products a medical um, a medical product, uh, and that was the way it was headed. But we just happened to have, by by luck, uh, a guy who worked at the uh, David Halpern of the Behavioural Insights team, which is otherwise known as the Nudge Unit. Uh, he he had a friend who tried an e-cigarette, and so he recognised the potential. And he he had contacts in the government, with David Cameron's government, and he told David Cameron not to ban these things. So they held back on it, and then went ahead with just basically falling in with regulation from the EU, and and that's kind of given a bit of breathing space, so that then UK health authorities can work out that these things are advantageous and that that they maybe should be encouraged and so then it, 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 bit by bit all the authorities got behind them and we, we're in the place today where they're talking about having one prescription and we have vape shops in hospitals and the NHS recommends them so, but if it wasn't for that accident that, that just uh, stroke of luck that David Halpin knew someone who used a vape back in 2010 it would never happen that way. The following year by the Royal College of Physicians with their report um, uh, nicotine, with, nicotine Without Smoke, I think it was called, and they came to the same conclusion that they put it in a different way. They said the harms from vaping will not exceed 5% of that, that of smoking, and they, they encouraged authorities to promote e-cigs widely. Uh, so, yeah, those two big, big reports uh, really changed the game over this side of the pond. Cool thing, isn't it? I think there's a lot more politics in the US I think a lot of the decisions being made in the US are, are political rather than on the basis of scientific evidence and public health. 